Pure, authentic conversation. That's soulfully casual. So grab your favorite beverage, sit in your favorite chair. Here is your host, Matty Ice. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Soulfully Casual podcast hosted by Matty Ice, and this is a Matty Ice Media Network production. I am Matty Ice, as always, and I hope everybody is having a great rest of your week. Uh, We have reached the end of the month of October. We have reached the end of spooky season. Sunday marks the end of spooky season with the culmination of it being Halloween. And here in America, and I think around the world too, uh, we have adopted the tradition of trick-or-treating at Halloween, and we have really honed in on and perfected the art of spooky season as it relates to you know Halloween and you know it's a fun month I mean we get to be a little bit hokey I find Halloween to be the more hokey of the the holidays that we celebrate and I think it's way more hokey than Christmas and I like kind of diving into that a little bit more over the course of this show for the last month I've gotten into some Halloween related topics we started off with movies we went into candy and we talked about some other stuff as well some other stuff that my old brain can't seem to remember but the candy episode really took people for a loop and I apologize about that I did not mean to ruffle feathers over the fact that Twizzlers are overrated again I don't mean that they're bad I just mean that they're not worthy of the hype but you know what it's going to get way worse when we get to Christmas however I did promise that we were going to close out this month with a little bit of a history lesson but before we get to that connect with the show on Instagram soulfully casual podcast Connect with me on Twitter. The handle is at Matty Ice Media. And of course, MattyIceMedia.com for all of your Matty Ice Media podcasting needs, like political football and the manual with Cleve Wason. But I said that I wanted to get into the history of Halloween because I think a lot of times we here in the 21st century in 2021, we do things, we have traditions, and I don't think we ask often enough, why do we do them? And where did they come from? And I thought it was pretty cool to end all of the fun Halloween stuff with a little bit of history as to how we got here. So Halloween as we know it today originates from a Celtic festival called Samhain, and it's spelled a little bit differently. I had to look up the uh, phonetic pronunciation of it. But basically, it was the, the, the Celtic tradition of people lighting bonfires and wearing costumes, and they were warding off the ghosts because they were starting the winter time, which was really their start of a dark period, and they were trying to sort of protect themselves and their harvest for the for the dark of the year and it it welcomed in this harvest and 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 ushered in what is considered a dark half of the year and if you think about the winter time we're coming up on daylight savings time it is friggin dark it starts to get dark at like 4 30 the sun goes down ridiculously early and we are darker than we much than we are lighter and i think that it's interesting to think about that i never considered that halloween started because people were trying to prepare themselves for the dark of winter uh, the celts would light their hearths from the fire that they created in these bonfires and this was a sa- considered a sacred bonfire and it was a bonfire that would protect them for the winter. And so think about the symbolic nature of that. Thinking, Think about having this bonfire to ward off the ghosts and protect themselves through the dark of winter, and then taking that fire and literally putting it in their hearts and thinking that that was protection for them. It's very much steeped in superstition, but I think it's interesting because it does tie into how Halloween turned into a day about the dead. And speaking of that, uh, when the Romans conquered basically the entire earth, it seemed, They ended up replacing many of the traditions and symbols of the people that they conquered with their own. And I think that is a theme of of conquering, you know, conquering peoples. But the Romans ended up using two festivals, basically, or two holidays, if you will, that sort of got us to where we are in terms of today's Halloween. The first one was Feralia, which was commemorating the passing of the dead. Obviously, there's many things about Halloween that denote death and denote you know, the afterlife, right? With zombies and, of course, you know, the living dead uh, with, like, Dracula and Frankenstein. And there's a lot of death that goes along with Halloween in, in terms of the scariness. Um, and the other one was Pomona, which was honoring the goddess of fruit and trees, which was a symbol of that was the apple. And it's interesting, too, because think about bobbing for apples, which is an activity that is mostly associated with Halloween. In today's pandemic world, it's absolutely disgusting, and I don't think we'll ever bob for apples again, but you see the correlation there. So these two Roman holidays merged with Samhain from the Celts have now really gotten us to where we are today in terms of Halloween. 
Uh, in the 8th century, Pope Gregory III designated November 1st to honor all saints. Now, we have the Day of the Dead, which is Halloween, October 31st, and now we have All Saints Day, which is November 1st. And that's kind of the, the, the entire point is, okay, on Halloween, everything's spooky and scary, and then on November 1st, we get past all that and we get into the season of thanks, and I think it's somewhat symbolic uh, to look at the you know the things that we're thankful for and i think the things that we're thankful for are the time that we had with the people that have passed before us but halloween in america halloween in america really evolved uh, over time in colonial america it really wasn't seen as something that needed to be celebrated you saw it more in the southern colonies specifically in maryland but obviously the the beliefs of the euro ethnic groups that were coming over here in America were then merged with a lot of the American Indian concepts that were also, you know, sort of stolen by, by the colonists. And that's how we got to some of our well-known traditions of Halloween. Halloween parties really stem from this. And one of the cool things about it is that the costumes obviously evolved, the trick-or-treating evolved, but what ended up happening is that Halloween turned into a very community-laden activity, that it was a way to build, you know, relationships with people in your community. And it's not something I actually thought about in the moment. You know, when I was trick-or-treating my entire life, I never really thought about that. But it's interesting how the European concepts that we borrowed from, you know, when we when we were uh, ruled by the British and then we obviously fought for our independence, I don't think that we thought about all of the traditions and concepts that we would have inherited from those from from the Brits and that would end up being something that we saw in today's world. And I think trick-or-treating and Halloween, it's interesting how... It really did come from that. But I like the idea of Halloween parties and building community, and I want to talk about that. So it's a very rough history of Halloween that has gotten us to today. Now, in today's world, depending on where you live, a trick-or-treating can be big or it's not big. So in the community that I live in, we live in a very small, uh, you know, single-family home, and we have some town homes that are nearby, and there's a lot of children that are around trick-or-treating age. When we first moved here, those kids were very young, and now they are like prime trick-or-treating age. And I think about the times that I trick-or-treated when I was a kid, and I think about the history of myself when it relates to Halloween. And I think sometimes we forget just how much fun it is when you're a kid and how much they enjoy it. Now, I think the candy is part of it, but it's dressing up. And think about as an adult, dressing up as something you know that you're not is what we do in our daily lives we just don't put a costume on a lot of times we pretend to be somebody or something that we're not and we're just not that but kids love it because they can be the physical embodiment of something that they idolize whether it's a superhero a character from a cartoon that they like or a movie that they like it's really cool to see all these things manifest but one of the things that it does and i think that i alluded to this already is community building but i think it builds community within your family this year is going to be a, a special year because my son is now old enough to go trick-or-treating. He's almost 20 months now, and he's going to have a homemade costume that my wife made him. And that's another thing that I remember from my childhood is my mom made costumes for me. Specifically, I remember she made a Peter Rabbit costume that I believe I used in a school play but then used at Halloween that year. I remember my parents dressed me up as Alf. If you're old enough to remember that, uh, that, that show from the 80s, Alf. Um, so those are some of the best memories that I had and be living in a community where the parents also were invested in each other and invested in their kids happiness and we would go trick-or-treating with groups and it was cool uh, I think about today's world about neighbors and how we don't really know our neighbor the way that we used to when I went trick-or-treating we met people and we knew the houses we knew the people that lived there and they'd be like oh hey Matt how are you how are your parents blah 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 and the parents would come with us and you'd kind of meet people and we would make new friends that way. That's one of the best memories that I have is being able to uh, you know, meet new people, being able to see different parts of my neighborhood that I didn't necessarily spend time in because I would bike around and we'd play around in the neighborhoods, but we never really talked with those people. There were houses that were misunderstood in the neighborhood and maybe that's where we are today is that we're more afraid to do that. And while Halloween in and of itself is a very innocent thing, I think there are ways in which it can help the community. And it's fun to think about it that way. I never truly put it together. But now, just like anything else, Halloween has turned into, unfortunately, a commercial product. What started as pagan rituals and something steeped in superstitions and, and looking for, for help for, for the dead of winter has now turned into something that we commercialize in every place. And while I'm not necessarily here to talk about capitalism and why it's a good or a bad thing, it is something that has been an unfortunate happenstance with the holidays and the holiday season. 
Uh, I know that for the month of November and December, I'm going to do a lot of focusing on the real true meanings of what these holidays that are in these months mean. And Halloween, I think, while we think about it in terms of dressing up and fun and candy and spookiness, those are all good things. Do not get me wrong. We need a lot of those escapes in our life. It's very, very important that we have them because the world can get very heavy. But in today's world where we are so hesitant to trust people and we're so hesitant to really build relationships with people, I think it's a good opportunity to do that within your communities. Now, the neighborhood that I live in is still considering this a pandemic trick-or-treating event. We're allowed to go to people's houses, but they're trying to do something for the neighbors to pull up candy and deliver candies to households that maybe are not comfortable having their kids go out and trick-or-treating. And that's a community building activity in and of itself. Knowing that your community is there for you, knowing that your neighbors are willing to help you, it's a wonderful thing. And I think there's an opportunity to do that on Halloween. Long gone, I think, are the days where we can just assume that the people that live near us or the people that we know are going to be there for us. You have to build those relationships and you have to nurture them and care for them. And I think that's one of the things that we can do on Halloween is when you go to somebody's house, especially when you bring your kids there. I know I'm going to try to do this. When I go to a house with my son, if we end up going trick-or-treating for long, I want to introduce myself and say, hey, my name is Matt and we live in the, the house over there in, in this part of the neighborhood and get to know the people because they live around you. These are the people that live in your community. So rarely do you get a chance to be in a community for as long as I've been here or in any other place. Get to know those people and get to know the other kids in the neighborhood. Understand the parents of those kids because I think it will help the journey if you're a parent to navigating parenthood because the cycle of life is sick it is cyclical i mean you go through so many different phases of of parenthood when your kids are one way versus the other and being a teenager and i think it's fun uh, for me on halloween i always think about my parents and this year more than others it's a little bit sad because it's been a long time since i've trick-or-treated the last time i dressed up for halloween was probably 2011 uh, let's just say that I was not in a state to drive that night, and it was a lot of fun. It's it's fun for a different reason, Halloween is. When you get older and you're in your 20s, uh, you think about it more as a social event where you can drink with your friends, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's basically the adult version of trick-or-treating, right? But I think about it now because those are indelible memories as a kid that I had. And when I think about where they came from, my Irish heritage, right, being related to the Celtic heritage, I think about what it means and I think about the symbolism of getting prepared for winter. We are coming close to the month of thanks, of giving thanks and remembering what we have. And I think it's fitting that at the end of October we, you know, inundate ourselves with gluttony going out and getting all this candy, but then we're really preparing ourselves for a season of giving and a season of thanks. And I think we need to remember that when we're out there, that it's okay to do something to excess, but it's also really important to give back. And that's why I talk about giving back to your neighborhood, giving back to your community. It's extremely important to do that. And while I wish I had prepared a better history of Halloween, it's really evolved as I've been recording this episode, that it's more about community. It's more about trust and building love and spreading love and do that on Halloween. Uh, if you connect with me on the Instagram or Twitter, uh, send me pictures of your kids' Halloween costumes or your Halloween costumes. Do you dress up your dog? Uh, my poor dog is unfortunately wearing a bandana that he's not happy to be wearing. But you know what? Winston's a good sport, and I know that in he will love uh, you know, what we're doing on Halloween because he loves his family just like I do. So I'm going to keep it short this week. Uh, I hope you are safe on Halloween if you're listening to this. Uh, please only go to doors that have lights on. Please make sure that your kids are safe, that they know to cross the street, you know, but looking both ways, that they're careful out there. Depending on where you live, it can be a high traffic area. A lot of people don't take it seriously on Halloween. They drive the same way that they would. Uh, make sure that if you're out and about, please be mindful of other kids and other parents that are out there because they're out there for a good time. And, you know, just be, be aware. Be aware of the fact that they're out there. Obviously, for the kids that are listening out there, if there are any, uh, please be safe and trusting strangers. I think when you're an adult, it's one thing to open yourself up to your neighbor. But as a kid, you always want to have a healthy skepticism when it comes to people you've never met. You obviously want to get to know them and you want to let your parents get to know them because it's very important. We still live in a world where people, adults are trying to harm children. And I remember my mom being obsessed with people putting razor blades and other things in my candy and she would check it just to be sure. So make sure you're doing all those things, but ultimately have a good time. Have a good time with your kids, have a good time with your grandkids. Uh, cherish these moments because we're getting close to the point where 
you know, we're going to have, we, we should be cherishing those more. And we don't get a lot of this time. And as we go into November and as we go into the season of giving thanks and giving back, it's important to remember those good times. So soak them all up. We don't get a lot of them and we don't get a lot of time with our loved ones. Uh, as always, connect with the show on Instagram, Soulfully Casual Podcast, Twitter. It is at Matty Ice Media and of course, MattyIceMedia.com. Uh, I'd love to know your best Halloween story. What's your favorite costume? What's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you on Halloween? And what are you planning to do to do this year? I'd love to know, and I'd love to be able to share those stories and those costumes uh, with the Twitterverse so they can see what my listeners are doing. Hug your loved ones, folks. Please be safe out there and take care. I will talk to you next week. Peace. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on the Soulfully Casual podcast are those of Matty Ice and not necessarily those of the Matty Ice Media Network. The Soulfully Casual podcast is exclusively owned by Matty Ice and is brought to you by the Matty Ice Media Network.